Before we start painting on the fabric, I just want to show you the basics of how much water and paint to have on your brush when painting on fabric. If you have one, I recommend taking a scrap piece of fabric and doing a little test like I am here to get the feel for it. Normally when working with watercolors on paper, the brush remains quite wet. In this first stripe that I'll do here, the brush is very wet with a small amount of paint. You can see that the color bleeds quite a lot pretty instantly and therefore becomes quite faded. Using the brush like this will end up giving you very little control. Now you'll see with this next line, I first dip the brush in the water, then gently tap it a few times on a paper towel or anything absorbent really, and then dip it into the paint. Here I'm using roughly the same amount of paint that I was before, but much less water. You can see immediately that the paint spreads much less, giving me more control as well as a more bold color. If you want to build up the color more slowly in lighter layers, but still with more control, just pick up the paint first, then dip the brush lightly into the water, and then tap it on the paper towel to remove the excess. This time the paint will be more diluted. So you can really see the difference between these two methods and why we might want to use this specialty method for the fabric over the paper. Now that we're a little more comfortable with the amount of paint versus water to use, let's start on the hoop. Feel free to copy where I put the paint or put it wherever you'd like it. Maybe you want to paint a different shape or paint inside the flower lines. The options are really endless with this project. Alright, the first mark is always a little bit nerve-wracking. Just go for it. Always start with your darker color. If you're nervous about it, try making a lighter mark to start. I like to create a large shape by combining a few lines. This will give you some natural variation in the amount of color depth right from the start that you can use to work with later. Keep playing around with the shape until you're happy with it, and remember that the more water that you use means the more bleed that you'll get. So especially near the edges, you want to have a pretty dry brush. As you get happy with your shape, 
Keep going back and adding depth to the darker areas, blending a little bit and touching up your shape as you feel necessary. You can't quite blend with water the same way on fabric that you would with paper, but you can add layers to create depth, blending, and interest. So you can see as I'm painting this shape that the areas that start out darker I try to add more depth to and the areas that kind of turn out lighter naturally I try to leave a little bit lighter so that you get those nice different depths of colour. While it doesn't have to be completely dry, I do like to give the paint a little bit of time between layers. You can see that the paint is drying on your fabric when you start to see what looks like little cracks a lot. This is totally normal and even adds a little bit of interest. Then you can go ahead and start with your second color. I like to overlap the colors a bit in the middle to create some unique blending and unity in the piece. While it does blend a little bit, you can see that the lighter color sort of sits on top of the blue. They will bleed a little bit into each other and that's just fine. And you'll also notice here that um, as you go over the blue areas, your paintbrush will pick up a little bit of the blue. So if you go right back into the sandy areas, uh, you'll bring a little bit of blue back in with it. So that's okay if you want that, but just something to make note of.
You may need to add a couple layers of the sandy color over the blue, depending on how much you want the colors to overlap. It is also important to note that these colors will fade a little bit into the fabric as it dries completely, so I like to make sure that there's a good difference between the lighter and darker areas of each color. You'll also notice that because this is a more pale color that we're using with this one, there's just going to be um, less variation in color naturally. And when you're done with the watercolor, we'll move on to the embroidery for the flower. 